come around here and say hi I'm Liz Thompson National Education Manager of Genomi Canada and today we are going to cover the border guard foot you really don't need to see my face so um, we will uh, see what's going on at the machine and with this foot and I've got lots to tell you so let me without any further ado uh, pop right in and start off with uh, our Genomi live okay a quick shout out to our dealers, um, our Genome Canada dealers. Most of them are still open, operating behind closed doors. Here in BC, for example, they were not mandated to close, um, but they are practicing social distancing. So sometimes you have to wait outside the store for a turn to come in. I have exactly the same when I go grocery shopping. So I think it's all becoming quite normal to all of us. Um, but you can also call, phone, or email your dealer um, and ask them if they have what you need in stock. Many of them are shipping. Many of them are doing curbside pickup or pick up at the door of their store. So do uh, make sure that you support your dealers. We do still want them to be around by the end of this year. Um, okay, um, we also, just to mention, we have mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. We currently have a fabulous drop ship sale on with Janome. So in other words, if you want to buy a new machine, you just need to contact one of our local dealers. The list of dealers is on our .ca, genome.ca website, and you can contact the dealer and then we will drop ship that machine directly to your door uh, from our warehouse in Ontario. And uh, you don't even have to get out of your PJs to open the door to get that machine. So that's really quite exciting. All right, um, the next thing I wanted to mention, uh, because you may or may not be aware of it, I've got this piece of paper here that talks about Genomi bulletins. Now you may know that you can get these bulletins and there is one for the uh, border guard foot. Um, it was produced a number of years ago when we first got the border guard foot and these bulletins are available on the global website. So all you need to do is Google Genomi and up will come uh, that. It's not in Japanese, it's in English. And then there is a downloads tab. There it is there, downloads tab. And then at the bottom of those downloads, you'll see a little um menu option bulletins and if you go there there are literally dozens of bulletins about various genome feet and accessories and they're pdfs you can download them print them um, and keep them for reference i thought i'd mention that and then also to mention to you as well that on the machine right now is a nine millimeter border guard foot uh, this is an optional accessory it does not come with your machine this one here that I'm pointing to, I'm hoping you can see it uh, here, is a um, seven millimeter border guard foot. That is when we got it, first of all. We did not actually have nine millimeter machines at that time. And so if you have a machine that is seven millimeters, and if you're not sure exactly what that means, it means the space, the opening in your foot is a maximum of seven millimeters wide and there is just for your interest only one genome machine that has this foot standard with the machine in other words it comes packed when you buy the machine that machine has now been discontinued long ago but it was a really fabulous machine i almost cried when they took it away from me and that was the genome 7700 with the red face it was a very very popular machine and that is the only machine that had this foot standard. If you don't have the 7700 and you want this Genomi border guard foot, that's when you're going to call your local dealer and ask them if they can ship it to you or you can pick it up from their store. Um, the part numbers are there, but you will also be able to get them on our website or from your dealer. So without further ado, let's move that piece of paper away. And I have a piece of fabric here that I have marked and I'm hoping you can see it. Let me move this uh, headphone wire out of the way. Um, I have marked it with a fabric marking pen um, on, uh, on my fabric and I have given, uh, drawn a horizontal line and a vertical line. You only need really to do that vertical line. But I like to do the horizontal line because it helps me with the beginning of each row. 
Now, what does this foot do? What on earth am I supposed to be doing with this foot? Because it's quite an unusual looking foot. It's got a red line across there and it's got four different red lines uh, vertically and it's got three little red markings in the middle of the foot. So let me explain what those are for. The very middle one is obviously for your middle needle position. So that little red mark there is what I'm going to line up with my drawn line on my fabric. This uh, red marking to the right is the far right needle position. And this one over here is the far left needle position. I'll be honest and say I don't use those terribly often, but it could be something that might be useful to you depending on what application you're using this foot for. Okay, so what we do is we line up the foot with the markings on the fabric and I'm going to put my presser foot down and I'm going to make sure um, that I have got that horizontal red line exactly in line with the line I've marked on my fabric because that is where I'm going to start each stitch. And I'm going to ride that center line down my marking. Now I only need to mark this fabric once. And I've got a whole lot of samples for you here which I will show you um, as we go. Uh, this one here, you might have remember seeing a few weeks ago when I did an Instagram live on making a little baggie with these ta zipper tabs. And this was done using the uh, Janome Border Guard foot. So the purpose of the foot is to do multiple parallel rows of decorative stitching. And the sky is pretty much the limit. Okay. This one is another one. This is one of those humbug bags where um, you do your side seam and the other side seam you kind of do in the opposite direction. And I only have three rows of stitching here, but I did use the border guard for that because, border guard foot for that because it allows me to do um, such perfectly parallel rows. This one is another one with lots of decorative stitches done in parallel rows. Some of them looked like they wouldn't have been done by machine, but they were. They were just uh, what we call stitch building. They were put very close together. Here is another one where I have used the border guard foot for decorative stitching. This looks quite bold because I actually used a thicker uh, thread for that. And then you might be able to see a little better. I have a sewing machine cover here that Janome Girl made, and she used the border guard foot over here to decorate it. And then right at the back, I can pick that one up because it doesn't have a machine underneath it. This one is one I made. And if you're interested in making this um, sewing machine cover, it is available on Sew for Home. Um, uh, which is just literally sew the number four home.com and they are our friends uh, over on that website and that particular um, uh, pattern and project is available on their website you'll just need to go into the um, resources and find it possibly I can put a link to it on YouTube when we post this video there all right, so it does assist you to do these parallel rows of decorative stitching, but how do we prepare the fabric? I think we all know that if we do a decorative stitch, like a zigzag or any other decorative stitch, and we have just a piece of fabric, we run the very strong likelihood of that fabric distorting and tunneling as the stitches pull the fabric together. So what I've done here is I have a piece of backing fabric and I have a piece of batting and that will stabilize my fabric and I'm going to stitch on that. But you could use a piece of stabilizer if you didn't want to use um, batting and backing. Um, what stabilizer would you use? Well, you could use a tearaway stabilizer, but once you have done a whole lot of decorative stitches on your fabric, to then tear away that stabilizer from behind, well, I don't envy you that task. It will be very fiddly and you could actually pull some of the stitches if you rip that stabilizer too much. So my recommendation would be don't use a tear away stabilizer, rather use an interfacing, pref preferably something that you iron on that will stay there. 
or alternatively you could use a water soluble stabilizer a fairly firm one which will then wash away afterwards and you don't have to sit and pick those pieces out um, and there are some um, stabilizers that are iron away you could also possibly try something like that so think ahead of what you're going to use your stitched a piece of work for and then according uh, uh, use the stabilizer accordingly what needle well right now I believe I have a purple tip needle in the machine and if you want to know more about red blue and purple tip needles go to Janome Life um, uh, which is uh, uh, on our tab our blog tab on genomi.ca because we've done many many posts on those I don't strictly need a purple tip needle it just happens to be what's in the machine probably I would have used a red tip needle a genomi red tip needle because it's got a larger eye what thread am I using well you might be able to see I've just got a white bobbin thread in my bobbin and I have an orange polyester embroidery thread in my needle um, I like to use a polyester embroidery thread uh, for embellishment um, it's got that slight shine to it and I prefer it to the matte look that you get with cotton but having said that there's absolutely no reason why you uh, should not use a cotton uh, thread variegated threads or multicolor threads are also a fun thing to do and we'll talk about some other uh, options um, a little bit further on all right so first and foremost I'm just going to move this to the screen of the machine let's see if you can see it okay hopefully you can see that well so I'm going to go to my um, category by the way I'm sewing on the Janome Continental M7 um, but this can pretty much be done on any of our Janome machines that have some decorative stitches that you can play with obviously the more the merrier um, I'm going to choose a satin stitch and the satin stitch that I want to use let's just use this one here and you'll notice that it has a maximum stitch width of nine millimeters and it has a default setting of 0.4 millimeters for the stitch length now when I'm doing a satin stitch I actually like it to be 0.35 so I've changed it uh, why do I change that well because at point four sometimes I still see a little bit of fabric peeping through my satin stitch and I personally don't like that so I have changed my stitch length ever so slightly if you go down to point three or below point three you run the risk of the um, satin stitch piling up and then you're going to get a thread jam so I don't go below 3.5 sorry point three five all right I'm all lined up now um, I could uh, use my needle up down my pivot function um, which I've done obviously notice here I could combine a bunch of different stitches I don't have to be doing the same stitch all soldiers in a row there are so many creative possibilities with this foot so let's go back to the machine so that you can see what I'm doing on the machine and I'm going to set needle up down and it's come right bang in the middle of my two marked lines so I know I'm exactly where I need to be and now I am going to whoops I thought I'd cleaned my machine earlier but there was one little bit of fluff that obviously didn't fall out and now has um, I am riding that very middle red line on the foot down my marked line all the way along doing my satin stitch and um, that is the only line you mark as I said earlier the only line you need mark that's the beauty of this foot you do not need to mark subsequent rows which can be a little tedious um, I'm not going to go the whole way so I'm just going to hit my tie off button my lock stitch and it will finish the little pattern it was busy with and stop and then I'm going to use my scissors and it will take the thread to the back and cut it and there is my first little row of uh, decorative stitching so now my second row I don't want to do it in orange so I'm taking this orange thread which incidentally is uh, Helos Iris uh, ultra bright polyester embroidery thread um, we do carry that at Janome Canada and it can be bought through any of our Janome or Elna dealers so if you haven't seen it and you'd like to maybe try it it is available you just need to ask your dealer 
um, what I've now got in is a different color. Uh, it's a it's a green color. I'm not sure if it's the right green for this fabric, but never mind. And then I'm going to lock the machine and thread my needle. Okay, I didn't have it quite in, so let's do that. Right, there is my needle threaded. I will unlock the machine. And now the trick comes, how do I position my second and my third row of stitching. Well, first of all, before I do that, I want to go and choose a different stitch because I, just because I can, and because I want to use um, something a little different. Let's just see, I'm just trying to find the one I want. Let me go to my stitch panel. Um, I think it's in the heirloom category, not the decorative category. So let me just go back a little. And one more. Yes, there it is. Okay, so I've chosen a little scallop stitch. And um, I am going to come now and I'm going to position my horizontal line once again on my horizontal marked line on my fabric so that I know I'm starting at the same point. And then these two red lines on my foot, I'm going to position them so that they are directly over what I have just stitched. And now I'm going to start stitching my scallop. I'm not even worrying what's going on with the scallop. All I'm watching is the stitching that I did previously in the orange thread and uh, my two red lines. And I'm going to hit the tie off and stop it and cut my thread and there is my scallop stitch which is now beautifully positioned in relation to this now i want to do the third row and i'm somebody who doesn't like all these threads so i'm going to trim that off and i'm now going to position the two red lines on the other side of the foot the right hand side of the foot again over my original number one row and I'm going to put the presser foot down, make sure that it's all positioned in relation to the horizontal line as well. But I don't want my scallop to be that same way. I want it flipped. So I'm going to go and choose the mirror image icon on my screen and it now flips my stitch uh, horizontal, well, it flips it the other way. Now, if your Janome sewing machine does not have a mirror image function, you can call your Janome dealer today and they can sell you a machine that does have the mirror image function. Just saying. But if it doesn't, in all honesty, all you need do is take your fabric, turn it around and do the same stitch on the other side. But because this machine is our top of the range sewing machine, I do have the mirror image. So I don't need to worry about that. And I can now stitch my scallop or scallop if you come from where I come from you call it a scallop and you ride it the same as we did before down the middle and then when I'm ready let me move my head out of the way I'm going to hit my tie off or lock stitch and it will finish and tie off and I'm going to cut my threads okay so there we have three rows of stitching but what about the stitching in the middle um, that one I probably um, will want to have my stitches a little closer together perhaps I don't uh, but if I do what I'm then going to do is I'm going to take this line here and this line here let me get this it'll maybe be easier that first line and the first red line here and I'm going to line those up either side of the two stitches the one orange and the one green scallop that I did and then this center red line is going to ride down the middle and I will do row number four and then I will do exactly the same on the other side and stitch row number five and then if I want row number seven I would then position this alongside there and it will then stitch there 
and then position that there and it's going to stitch there so I can keep going outwards and so the trick is you you stitch row number one and then row number three and five and then if you want to do it in the same color you can leave the, the machine threaded and do seven and nine and then come back and do the even rows two and four six and eight and so on a little bit of math there but not heavy math so I think we're all good all right so that is the technique of uh, using the border guard foot and I just want to have a look and see if we've got any questions what size does the 15,000 take your 15,000 is a nine millimeter machine so you would take the nine millimeter foot and that is because on a seven millimeter machine you you have a smaller little bar I'm hoping you can see that yeah a little smaller bar so the seven millimeter one will not fit on a nine millimeter machine because that's too small so ask your dealer and they will sell you the correct border guard foot okay so I'm glad that you now have had some of your mystery um, solved for you it, it is a strange looking foot uh, yes, I do have stabilizer under the fabric. I actually, on this particular sample, used a piece of batting and a piece of backing fabric just because I happen to have that square. But we did talk earlier in the the um, Instagram live about um, you, what stabilizers to use. So you might want to watch it in the story because it'll be in the Instagram story for 24 hours after this is finished. Okay, so I do want to show you a couple more uh, samples because who said that it has to be hugely multicolor? Here I only used two colors and I took one of the satin stitches and I elongated it because I have the elongation function on my machine and I'm just going to go there and show you that. So let's go to our decorative stitches. Let's go to satin stitch. And if we go into our adjust menu, this is what pops up. Let me just check. You can still see um, the comments are kind of in the way, but I think you can. Do you see this machine, the Janome Continental M7? And it's not the only machine to have this feature. So don't get your knickers in a twist. There are many of our machines that have the elongation function and you will find it in your manual if your machine has got it. Uh, so do use your manual. I know lots of people don't, but it is there. And if it's there, you can actually elongate your uh, stitch to be um, five times the length of its original default setting on the machine. And that is what I did with this satin stitch on the machine. All right, here under, under my uh, uh, foot. And I elongated it five times, and then I stitched it this way, and then vertically mirror imaged it for the alternate rows and just kept flipping backwards and forwards. And then I used one of these cute little stars or daisies whatever you want to call them in between so it doesn't have to look like a christmas tree it can actually look a little bit this looks a little bit like a christmas tree but it can look uh, really quite nice if you keep it simple this depends what you're wanting to do and then i wanted to give you another creative possibility and that is who said you can't use a twin needle well nobody so here i have a twin needle this one, I believe, happens to be a two millimeter twin needle. In other words, the space between the two needles is two millimeters. And I used a serpentine stitch and then I used two other decorative stitches. I have not yet done the mirror of those stitches, but I would. You don't have to do the mirror. If you want all of your stitches to be completely different, it's your creation. You can do entirely what you want. I just happen to be a little bit of a stickler for symmetrical things. So I would probably do these same stitches on the other side. Do remember with twin needles that uh, you cannot thread them with a needle threader on the machine because the needle threader is going to go down the middle of those uh, needles and it's not going to help you. So you do have to thread those manually or use a little manual needle, th needle threader for that. Um, the other thing you need to know about, needle uh, about twin needles is that you are limited to the space in your foot which on this one is nine millimeters, it may be seven millimeters on yours. And so if that is the case, take 
extra care when you use a twin needle if your machine does not have a twin needle function. This machine does have it and it all, I touched that, that uh, icon and it automatically reduced the stitch width of these stitches that I did here. So I can't get a nine millimeter stitch width with a twin needle on this machine because I would break my twin needle on the foot and possibly run the risk of breaking my foot as well, which I don't wanna do. Uh, if your machine doesn't have that twin needle function, then just manually reduce the width of your decorative stitch so that, and then just use your flywheel to make sure that your twin needle is going to clear the opening in your foot because you don't want any dramas. Okay, um, before we finish off, because I'm nearly done, is I wanted to just show you something from past weeks. Whoops, that went flying off the top. Um, do you remember a couple of weeks ago, Erin showed us in, during zipper week how to make a welt pocket zipper bag? And I did this. So Erin, I hope you're proud of me. That one I did. And then I, I was on a roll that week with zipper baggies. And so this was an embroidery that I had done and I used my zipper tab method and I turned it into a little baggie. Here was one where I had done something similar to border guard work and I chopped it up and sewed it together and put a piece of ribbon over the top and then put a zipper in it and the back is just quilted. And this one was also an embroidery, what I call an orphan block embroidery. I did one block and then didn't really do any more. And then I had some, uh, these are stitch outs that are done for the most part at shows. We keep the machines busy at shows. And uh, I just turned it into, and there's some another embroidery on the back. I just turned it into a little bag. And here was another one with an embroidery that got turned into a bag and the back was just quilted. So uh, that shows you that I've been really productive. What on earth am I going to do with all of those uh, bags? Well, I think there are going to be a lot of people getting gifts with hand creams and soaps and whatever in there uh, for Christmas and so on. So before I finish off, let me just uh, run back through and see that I've answered all the questions. Um, does it pucker the fabric a lot? No, not if you use stabilizer as explained earlier in this uh, video. You do need a good stabilizer to make sure your stitch, your decorative stitches don't pucker the fabric. If you use stabilizer, no puckering at all. Um, watch the um, Instagram live uh, today on our story for the next 24 hours or on our Janome Life YouTube channel once we've edited it and posted it there probably within the next couple of days. Um, if you have the 15,000, do you really need the M7 asking for a friend? Well, I have the M7 sitting here and right behind me is the 15,000. Because if you want to do embroidery, you cannot do hoop embroidery on this machine. This machine has almost 14 inches of space. And it also has a lot more super brand new features that the 15,000 doesn't have. So quite honestly, I sew on this and I embroider on the 15,000. Um, so, you know, it depends on personal preference. But for me, I like having both. Um, all right, I think that's it. If you have any further questions, you're more than welcome to send them into uh, Genomi Canada's Facebook page or Genomi Canada's uh, Instagram Live page or our Genomi Life YouTube. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you are now going to be able to use the Border Guard foot if you had purchased it. And if you haven't purchased it, I mentioned you can get it from any of our Genomi dealers. Thank you so much for tuning in um, and we will see you again next week. Next week, we will have Instagram Lives on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Watch our Instagram, Genomi Life, and Facebook for the topics on each of those days. Have a lovely day. Bye. Bye.